All right, I got an absolute insane match for you here, and it's insane because boy oh boy do I ever make a mess of it. What we have is Floan Dereese with us going first. Pretty decent opening hand here versus Branded Thunder Dragon, and this is a 60 card version here. So we're going to start off with Map, Reveal Toucan, and this is exactly what I talked about in the deck list, which is linked in the description. Starting off with this combination, if I had Street, I would have to Normal Summon Street. Street would fizzle since there's nothing in either graveyard, and then I'd get Robina back, use Robina as my Normal Summon for turn, which would waste my Normal Summon for turn in order to continue playing. Whereas with Toucan, I can summon it, target the Robina, and not have to worry. In this instance, I'm not worried about an Imperm or a Veiler, or really even, well, I guess not Ash Blossom because they can't Ash the Toucan. They can Ash the uh, Robina though, because I have the um, Advent and the Book of Moon to dodge the effects. And again, if I haven't used my normal summon, so if the Robina was Ashed, I can always Advent, banish it, uh, or banish the Toucan probably, and search the Eaglin anyways, and still continue follow-up. Whereas if I had Shri here, I would be susceptible to interruption. So again, that's real-time uh, example of why I play two Tukin over two Stree, just because it's more consistent for the opening hand. And I don't know, for some reason, the game opens up map with Tukin more often than not. And, you know, playing two Stree, if I opened up map and Stree, I'd be running into those uh, susceptible pro uh, sorry, those problems more often than not, for some reason. Regardless, though, we're going to use Eaglin grab Empin here. The opponent reveals that they're on Thunder Dragons discarding the thunder dragon dark in order to search for another one here so they're just like thinning their deck but again you're i mean you're on 60 cards guys so i don't know you're not really thinning your deck all that much here um unfortunately you know the shifter in our hand um is actually going to help them uh you know assuming that they're on thunder dragon pure at this moment because i haven't been it hasn't been revealed that they're on branded but this end board here only being able to go for one empin um is weaker than if I had two Empins, right? Because if I had two Empins, I would have used this um, Advent of Adventure, banish this Empin, search out another Empin, right? Off off the summon of this Empin, I would have put Eaglin on board. Um, obviously, Eaglin's already used its effect, so I can't search. But um, I would be able to tribute the Toucan and the Eaglin, bring out the Empin that I search off of the um, Advent of Adventure, and that Empin will search Unexplored Winds, Activate Unexplored Winds. I'd only get the Toucan back to hand because Eaglin and Robina already came back to hand. So I have Toucan back in hand. Eaglin and Robina banished. One Empin on field, one Empin banished. No Advent of Adventure set, but instead an Unexplored Wind that's active. And Unexplored Winds plus the uh, Dreaming Town is very strong. And then, of course, during my opponent's turn, whenever I normal summon either triggering off map or off of the Dreaming Town, I normal summon Toucan, target the banished Empin that I banished with the advent of adventure and then i can use unexplored winds and tribute off their cards to bring out that empin um, as well as get the eaglin back summon eaglin bring out apex right tribute off one of their cards again with the unexplored winds bring out apex and then i have you know double empin and apex on board and i've outed their you know two of their cards on their field putting them on even less resources so without that i can't i can't go for that play right because <clears throat> um advent of adventure banishing eaglin here can only search snowl as the only other tribute monster that doesn't really do anything in this instance, right? Because I'd rather have the Empin on board than the Snowl. So it's a, it's a little bit of a rough spot. The opponent reveals the Branded cards here on their turn. So Branded opening. I'm going to Chain Shifter here, even though, like I said, I know that it helps the Thunder Dragons. And the reason for that is because I want whatever they discard, as well as the opening to get banished. So they don't have the opening protection to banish it from Grave in order to uh, protect the Fusion Monster. Off of the Alubur, they do search a regain, but, you know, they actually ditched their second Alubur here. Um, so both their Aluburs will end up being banished, which means they won't have the graveyard effects of Alubur either. So the shifter did put in work against Branded, as usual. Um, it does affect, it, it does uh, act as a detriment to Branded. You know, they don't like their, they like to manage when their cards are banished. They don't like you banishing their cards for them because it disrupts their plays to a certain extent. But they are going to get some good utilization uh, still because, again, the Thunder Dragon and the Branded Regain. Um, and, of course, Thunder Dragon Colossus is the ultimate floodgate against Floanderese. We can't add any cards from deck to hand, and that's what these little birds do, right? I need to I need to get this off the field, and I can because I have uh, the Book of Moon so that my Eaglin can resolve, so I'm not too worried. But, again, if I had the Unexplored Winds up from the second Eaglin, I could have made it so that they didn't even bring this out to the field. They haven't used their normal summon yet, but, you know, their Thunder Dragon cards all require tributes. If I would have been able to double tribute during their turn with Unexplored Winds up, I could have just tributed over the Thunder Dragon cards before they could even bring out Colossus, right? Um, and they would have had no way to tribute summon for a Thunder Dragon monster to get one on field to bring out the Colossus anyways. So again, you could see the impact of not having the Unexplored Winds set up there when, when I could have. So the opponent's going to opt to out their own Colossus with the Theater for a Chimera. 
Now, when the Chimera is summoned, they did use two materials from field, which means they're going to be able to pop two cards. I have to respond with Dreaming Town here. If I don't and the Chimera selects the Dreaming Town, I lose it and I won't be able to activate it, right? Because this card doesn't target. It's just going to resolve by destroying the cards um, on the field. So I have to choose to do this now. Otherwise, I risk it getting destroyed. So with the Colossus off the field, though, at least we are able to get the Eaglin resolving to search for a card. And um, the opponent opts to pop my map and my M pin, both of which get banished since we're under shifter, which is actually a benefit. But we're just going to go through a standard rotation off of the Eaglin. I end up searching Apex. And at this point, I'm on like 60 seconds because I'm trying to think so much and I'm not used to playing against this Thunder Dragon deck. So I'm trying to like keep track of the effects and what the opponent has in hand. And I thought for a while, do I, what do I bring here? Ryza, Apex. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to have to use Advent to banish the token so I can bring it back and get these, these three. That way I can get all four small birds up. Um, and I can get back the M pin off of the Toucan because you, you'll see what happens here. So I'm going to activate Advent so I can banish the Toucan, chaining it to the Robina. This will allow me to search for the Snowl, okay? And then the um, Robina will search for Street. When I summon Street, I'll be able to banish the only card in the graveyard in the uh, Dimensional Shifter, and then I'll be able to chain the Toucan that I just put into the Banish pile with the Advent of Adventure, and then this will allow me to resolve Street, Normal Summon Toucan, and Toucan target the Empin that they just destroyed. So that was a bit of a thinking process to get through and at this point i'm on like 30 seconds i think um so the misplays are about to come hard and fast um, but for now you know we're, we're feeling okay and uh, you know i probably should have put up apex avion because i think at this point i think uh, i know that they have two thunder dragon cards in hand and then two mystery cards um oh i do put up the apex here so good yeah so yeah they're gonna thunder dragon discard get another thunder dragon and we know they have another thunder dragon in hand so two mystery cards they reveal one of them in thunder dragon fusion so we are absolutely going to negate that um and then put the opponent on your last card better be able to make you play otherwise um it's going to be passed back to us and we already have the unexplored wins now to hand that we brought to hand during the opponent's turn when we recycled our empin we draw duality for turn and this is pretty much game at this point point. and you know it's funny because in real life, I have Snowl in my sideboard, and I know what it does. It's just like in this instance, I was just like so frazzled because I was just low on time. So like, you know, you get 60, 60 seconds back during my turn. I think I'm on like, yeah, like 60 or 50 seconds here. Um, for some reason, you always like lose two and three seconds when it goes back and forth as well. I don't know. Like, I hope Konami can fix that because if there's any sort of like lag on either side, like you just lose three seconds whenever it asks, asks the opponent if they want to interrupt. And with the Thunder Dragon deck, since they all have quick effects in the hand, like it's always asking them, do they want to interrupt? So I'm like constantly like losing time trying to think about like what my next play is. And it's it's just a very stressful situation. It's not an excuse. Um, you know, it is what it is. I need to learn to play faster. And I and I will once I get used to using the Snowl. But, you know, some of these misplays definitely were because I was under the time crunch, just as I was in that one video I posted where I was uh, using tier limits against uh, Bestial Dragon Link. And I was literally on zero seconds mashing the escape button so that I wouldn't time out. Anyways, in this instance, I, I have game, right? I have game. I summon the Toucan. I grab back the Dreaming Town. Um, I, you know, again, not having the second Empin means that I can't search out my second trap in deck. And so I can't grab the one of map back with Toucan and then search the second trap in the deck with the Empin. I, ha I have to choose now. Do I want trap or do I want map back with the Toucan summon? So uh, I shouldn't need trap because this game shouldn't be going another turn. It should be over here. So I use the Unexplored Winds and I tribute the Regain and stupid me, I bring out the Apex. Um, again, I was on like 27 seconds or something at this point. Do you see the misplay? <clears throat> All I need to do is bring out the Snowl instead, activate Snowl effect to conduct the additional normal summons. Then I can summon the Apex afterwards by tributing off the Guardian Chimera and out the opponent's monster. Then I have a 29, 27, and 27 on board, and that's game uh, over 8,000 damage. With an open field, the opponent has no, no interruptions. We know two, two or three other cards are Thunder Dragons. So that's just like GG's, right? Um, unfortunately, I'm dumb, and I don't do that. So at this point, you know, I just have to go battle phase, and I'm like, I just need to out the opponent's board because I'm running out of time, and I'm barely able to set... Um, or yeah, sorry, activate <laughs> activate Unexplored Winds because I have no more Tribute Monsters left in deck. So in order to resolve Eaglin, I have to put one of them back. So I put the Ryza back. I set the Dreaming Town and I think I had like 10 seconds left at this point or less maybe. The opponent summons Ecclesia. Again, stupid misplay, just you know, trying to act quickly. <clears throat> Why don't you let them bring the Albaz to field, let them discard, then negate that. That outs another extra resource from them, right? Nope, I opt to just straight up negate with the Apex. 
<clears throat> now the opponent reveals Allure of Darkness and they banish one of their Thunder Dragon cards. So they got two fresh cards in hand and they grab back the Thunder Dragon Fusion. We don't have the Apex on board to negate anymore, so they bring out Titan here. And again, another misplay. Why do I bother to activate um, Dreaming Town here? <clears throat> doesn't make any sense. I should have waited to use it as an interruption. I know that when uh, Thunder Dragon Monster activates its effect in the hand, I have to chain to it to prevent the Titan in or, uh, to prevent the Titan from getting the quick effect to destroy a card in the field. So I could have just simply waited for them to activate this effect uh, of the Matrix, then chain the Dreaming Town so it interrupts and the Titan doesn't get the quick effect to destroy a card. Um, so now because they do it this way, I either have to chain my Book of Moon to flip this face down, otherwise they're going to get the effect to pop a card in the field, and of course they're going to aim to pop the Unexplored Winds. So I don't do that, and I let them pop the Unexplored Winds, so again, another misplay. Um, so that's twice I've made critical mistakes. Again, just trying to play fast, uh, and I just double tribute for Snowl, which again is probably another misplay. I'm thinking like, okay, Snowl on board, if they end up extending in any which way, I at least have the ability to flip whatever else they bring to the field face down, because right now I'm banishing the Dreaming Town to flip the Titan face down, and if, they're, if they are able to extend or use Theater or whatever, I just use Snowl again and flip their field face down. Whereas if I had Apex, I just negate the Theater and destroy it, right? So even if they, you know, it would put them on have a card in hand to extend. So again, another huge misplay on, on my end here. Uh, yeah, just, just not, not playing very well. Um, so yeah, they're going to use Thunder Dragon, get one, get two. So we know two out of the four cards. They did draw the Branded Fusion off of the Allure. They're going to go into Lubellion. Okay, pitch Thunder Dragon most likely and fuse the Albaz and Lubellion for Albion. And they're bringing this out in defense so they can trigger it off of the, um, or prevent it from being negated from the Empen. And then they end up bringing Dragos to Pele in attack mode for some reason. Probably a misclick. Um, because I think the opponent was taking some time to think through things too, so they probably got distracted thinking thinking about something and then just ended up bringing this out in attack mode. Uh, and then they're also able to bring out a Thunder Dragon Dark. So at this point, uh, I think they were attempting to go battle phase, and I didn't even just wait for them. I just flipped it, flipped it face down right here. Oh, no, 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 they didn't. I thought for... Oh, I, I remember what happens here. So I thought if I flipped all this face down, they wouldn't be able to bring out Colossus. But yeah, Colossus can still trigger off the face down Thunder Dragon card to bring itself out. So that was a problem. Um, the opponent has no other extension though. They have one Thunder Dragon in hand and then obviously now this face down card. Um, so all I have to deal with is the Colossus. And again, I'm stupid here and I'm like, oh, Empin is probably negating this. And I'm like, or now I know, I was like, no, it's not. It's a continuous effect. It's not an activated effect. So I normal summon Robina here and it's doesn't, I don't get the search because of the Colossus. So stupid on me. Um, again, not the biggest deal because I have all my birds in rotation and I have the DD Crow. There's nothing really for Robina to search, but I do lose the summon off of the Robina. Again, shouldn't be a problem because all I have to do is activate Snowl and then Snowl will allow the two additional summons. However, you know, this card is lit, lit up and I'm thinking, no, it's only asking me if I want to book the opponent's field, which I didn't, I forgot that it's only during their turn. So I'm like, I'm not going to activate Snowl here to banish a card from my hand. And so I just go battle phase. Again, I'm under like 30 seconds, so I wasn't trying to waste time and you know do extra effects if I didn't need to. So I just end up going battle phase and just saying like, let me just out the opponent's board here. They use the Colossus effect to protect and it actually benefits them because now they get extra resources in hand. So they have two Thunder Dragon cards in hand and then they activate Scream to bring back the Dragos to Pele in defense and preemptively negate the Empin before the end phase. And then I don't use the DD Crow on the Ecclesia either. So again, another mistake there. So the opponent is now going to draw, banish the Thunder Dragon Fusion, um, activate the Dragos to Palea to bait out the Snowl, which is fine because they can flip all their cards face up and then Snowl's already used its effect. So I just banish the card for nothing. Um, and then they tribute over with the Kaiju. So this went from zero to 100 real quick for the opponent. Uh, you know, I just kind of gave this game away. Uh, but we're going to end up Book of Mooning the Colossus or uh, the Titan so that um, the, they don't get the effect to destroy a card. Uh, but then they're just going to use Thunder Dragon Fusion anyways to uh, bring out another Titan. And at this point, the opponent probably thinks, okay, yep, Ecclesia, Albaz, Discard, Fuse with the Kaiju that they gave me, go into Brigand, and this is game for them, right? Uh, I activate Book of Moon to flip the Titan face down. Now my Snowl is the biggest monster on board, so all they can do is beat over Robina, and the rest of them, and, and, and I don't die, basically. Uh, it was a misplay, though, because the opponent knew I brought this book of one of these two cards as Book of Moon to my hand with the duality, 
and I used the unknown card, Book of Moon, first to flip down the first Titan. So I should have used the card that was known to be Book of Moon because now that I used my mystery card, they knew that one of these other two cards were Book of Moon. Um, so again, they kind of played into it, so it didn't end up mattering, but it could have mattered, and it was a mistake. The evenly matched, though, um, ends up saving me, bringing the opponent down to just two cards, banishing the rest. They opt to keep the Colossus, and I don't have to worry about being negated by Dragostopalia anymore. Now I finally realize, oh, I have game because now all I need to do is activate Snowl and I get the additional summon. So kind of like map, like I said in the deck list video, I get the additional summons here and I can easily just bring out the uh, like Apex and just go for game here. So yeah, we're gonna start off by, yeah, bringing out the two cards that don't search because obviously we'd be negated by the Colossus here. And then we are going to tribute for the Ryza. Ryza is going to spin back Colossus and Emp into the top of the deck that was sent to the graveyard here. And then this way, my Robina and Eaglin that I haven't used yet for this turn can summon. And keep in mind that the Toucan and the Stree that were summoned were summoning off of their own effects. So uh, I still have two summons, as you can see above the Snowl there. I still have two normal summons for turn uh, that I can utilize. So I normal summon Eaglin. And again, that's one of my summons. I'm going to be able to continually summon off the Eaglin. So I'll still have one normal summon for turn after the Eaglin resolves. So... This is the synergy with the deck. Unfortunately, I had to misplay this bad in order to show it to you. Um, but yeah, you can see kind of how it works. And at this point, we are going to be able to search for the second token, bring out the Apex so we can negate whatever the opponent has. If, you know, this card was something, I think it was a Thunder Dragon, but if they had some kind of interruption, Apex, negate, bring it back to hand. I still attack for game with Snowl and Tukin. That's why I ended up summoning the Tukin as insurance. Um, so in the end, we ended up taking the game, but it took... Uh, an evenly matched to bring us back after misplaying horribly several times. So don't make the same mistakes as I do. Make sure you go into solo mode and practice your deck and know what your cards do. Know your interactions, know your lines, um, because for all those people that say this deck is a little too easy to pilot, um, maybe I'm just dumb, but there's an example of where you can gravely misplay.